I wanted to share this really nice game with you, a game that Alareza played against Grandmaster Jules Massard in a Blitz game on chess.com, and I wanted to share it with you because it has such a cool mating pattern in it. Let's take a look. Ferruja had white, Grandmaster Moussard has black, d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, c4, and the Grandmaster plays c6, trying to create a strong point on the d5 square, the Slav defense, knight to c3. The mainline Slav is to take that pawn, but in this game, Grandmaster Moussard played e6, or the semi-Slav system, bishop to g5, dc4 is the super sharp Botbinic variation, but instead black played h6. Black can take on f6, give up the bishop pair, try to play a quick e4, but in this case, Ferruja plays bishop to h4, keeping the tension. Knight b to d7, e3, bishop to e7, and queen to c2. Ferruja puts the queen in a very strong spot. Not only does he control e4, but he also is placed, if the c file were to open up, the queen would be able to put pressure down that file. Castles and rook to d1. It protects d4 because if he's able to play e4, the d4 pawn would lose a key defender. He also places the rook opposite black's queen. a6, controlling uh, the b5 square. Perhaps he could play b5 himself. c5, completely locking up the position. Now, the main move here and the move computers like is actually b6, attacking the pawn chain from the front. But that's not what is played in this game. The pawn chain is attacked at the base, which is what people normally do in these types of positions. You attack at the base of the pawn chain. Uh, pawn takes pawn, and of course, black is hoping that he can do something with this hanging c5 pawn. Uh, the only move that had been played in this position before this game was knight to g4, but that actually was a blunder that had been played. After bishop to g3, uh, the knight is going to be trapped after h3, and black is in uh, quite a bit of trouble. So the stronger GM opponent in this game plays knight to e8, a novelty, and keeps that knight a little bit safer. The bishop goes to g3, preserving the space with the pawn on e5. Now knight, knight takes c5, equalizes the material. However, Ferruja still has uncomfortable pressure down the d-file, aiming at the queen, which he takes advantage of by playing e4, attempting to open up that file and create a weakness on d5. Knight to c7 to help defend that pawn. Bishop e2. And here Grandmaster Moussard plays a5. He really can't afford to play a pawn move in this position. Probably better would have been bishop to e6, getting a piece out, strengthening d5 even further. Uh, after a5, Ferruja is able to generate quite a bit of pressure. Uh, he castles, and now bishop to e6, and then knight to d4. His threat is to play f4, f5, and just kill on the king's side. Uh, bishop to h4 is played, challenging the bishop on g3. And he could play ed5, that's a strong move, but instead he plays sort of the fancier move. Knight takes d5, and he's not losing this uh, knight because this unveils the queen's attack on the knight at c5. Cd5, now queen takes knight, bishop g3, hg3, and rook to c8, placing the rook opposite Alareza's queen, but it hangs the a5 pawn, and now Alareza is up two pawns. The rook goes back to a8, queen to b6, attacking the b7 pawn, rook takes a2, grabbing one of those pawns back, but then queen b7. And what uh, Grandmaster Moussard, I think, is hoping for, that after the exchange of queens with queen to b8, he can provide some relief for his position and survive the end game. Well, Ferruja goes ahead and takes those queens off of the board. Knight takes e6, and now f e6. Obviously, if you take with the knight, then e d5, and that would be it. So he must take with the pawn. e d5, knight d5. And he was putting all of his stock and holding on to that strong square on d5. But bishop to c4 hits the rook on a2 and the knight on d5. If he takes the pawn at b2, then just bishop takes ed5 and f4, and white definitely is better uh, in this position with those strong pawns and the isolated weakness on d5 for black, uh, but it probably would have been better than what was played in the game, excuse me, uh, rook to a5, attempting to hold the d5 square, but then b3, preserving that b pawn, protecting the bishop on c4, king to f7, rook f to e1, now g5, Black would like to activate the king by playing king g6, king f5, and get it involved, put some pressure on the e5 pawn. Rook to d4, rook to c5, now f4, and king to g6. Grandmaster Moussard is continuing this pattern of bringing the king in the center, but we know 
that Ferugia has something uh, special planned for that king, and here he plays a very powerful move. F5 check. Now let's look at black's options. If he, say, plays king to F7, moves the king away, then just pawn takes king E6, and that allows Ferugia to just transpose essentially into a winning king and pawn to end game at his leisure. He'd have to grab the B pawn, and then Ferugia would just take the pawns on the king's side. Uh, the other option would be to just take, to take with the pawn, but then you just lose the knight. So he takes with the king. Now, do you see Alareza Ferugia's move here? That's right. Bishop to d3, and surprise, surprise, checkmate. The rook covers the fourth rank. This pawn is protected. There's nowhere for the king to go, and Ferugia delivers a checkmate. I hope you enjoyed the game. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.